For this week's discussion question, we were asked to select a condition from module four and then go through the steps of clinical judgment as well as define the condition. I selected hydrocephalus and what that is is a buildup of cerebral spinal fluid in the ventricular system resulting in the enlargement of the intracranial cavity. What are ventricles? There are four interconnected cavities of the brain that are filled with CSF and promote circulation of this fluid. For the steps of clinical judgment, the first step is recognizing cues. So this is your, and during this step, you're gonna be assessing your patient and filtering information from different sources such as their signs and symptoms, their health history and their environment and identifying um, which condition they're experiencing. So for hydrocephalus, a person would be at increased risk if they are an infant or an older adult. Some other risk factors are brain and spinal cord tumors, infections of the central nervous system, and then injury or stroke that's caused by bleeding. So once you recognize your cues, step number two is analyzing those cues. So during this step, you're linking and recognize, you're performing a linking of recognized cues to the client's clinical presentation and then establishing potential client needs, concerns, and problems. So some of the clinical presentations that a patient with hydrocephalus may have are unusually large head shape or circumference, downward deviation of the eyes, vomiting, sleepiness, nausea, abnormal walking, instability, and confusion. So if a patient it not only has like the risk factors, but also the symptoms, and you can identify what they're, the condition they're experiencing. Once you have identified that a patient has hydrocephalus, then you can go to step three, which is prioritizing your hypothesis. That's establishing your priorities of care. So for a patient with this condition, some of the priorities would be to get a CT scan, MRI, lumbar puncture to assess if a shunt will be successful, and then ICP monitoring. That's just monitoring the intracranial pressure and ensuring that there's not a significant increase. After prioritizing your hypotheses in step three, you'll move on to step four, which is generating solutions. This is essentially your planning stage. Um, this is when you'll identify expected outcomes and relating nursing nursing interventions to ensure that the client's needs are met. So a expected outcome would be that the patient will demonstrate improved brain function as evidenced by normal vital signs, improvement of alertness, and no further deterioration. So some of the nursing interventions that can be performed would be um, routine monitoring of vital signs, making sure that there's no significant changes in blood pressure, um, irregularity in breathing and heart rate, because these can be early signs of increased intracranial pressure. And then it's also important to be assessing the neurological status of the patient and making sure there's no significant changes. Um, and then you can also perform assessments of the pupil size and cranial nerve assessments. For the step number four, that will, or sorry, number five, that's when you're gonna be taking your actions and performing your um, implementations. So that's when these interventions and implementations will be based on nursing knowledge, nursing knowledge, your priorities of care and planned outcomes. So the treatment for hydrocephalus um, you may have to prepare a patient to get a ventriculostomy, which is a procedure that's done to drain the excess cerebral spinal fluid. And then they may have to have a shunt placed, um, and that's placed in the ventricle and threaded to another part of the body to drain the CSF. And it's important to note that the patient will have that for the rest of their life. Lastly, it's important to teach about long-term follow-up of shot and teach about the meningitis vaccine to um, prevent that from happening because that's a big risk factor of developing hydrocephalus. Lastly, step number six is to evaluate your outcomes. So during this step, you'll just 
determine if all of the nursing interventions were appropriate and if outcomes have been met. So that's all I have for this condition. Um, thank you for listening.